Hi everyone, my name is David and welcome to my thoughts. So in the last video I mentioned briefly that I had recently gotten rid of my smartphone for a flip phone and a fellow down in the comments, Seth Dunn, asked me a little bit about that so I figured I might as well talk about that here. So I got a smartphone for my 15th birthday. It was really cool, it was really sweet, now I was cool like all the other cool kids in my cool cool school. Um, and needless to say, uh, it didn't work out nearly as well as I had hoped it would. I spent far too much time on YouTube and just surfing the internet and just wasting hours upon hours upon hours of time. I'm not sure how long that, that would, amount of time would be if you added it all up together, but I'd imagine weeks of time in just a year and a half of having that phone. So. My wanting to get a flip phone started when my dad and I first read through a book called You Are What You Love by Jamie Smith, which is short for James K.A. Smith, which is short for, I'm not sure what K.A. stands for, but he's a guy. Uh, and he wrote a book called You Are What You Love. I highly recommend it. At the time that I read it, it was the best book that I had ever read. Everything else was you know, sort of Dr. Seuss, which has its own sort of, you know, good merits in and of itself, but um, eventually you start wanting a little bit more. So my dad uh, lives down in the Twin Cities, and he and I would read a lot, um, just going back and forth on our car rides. I'd visit him every other weekend, and, and it was a sort of thing that we, we bonded together over. It was just, we, I'd read out loud while he drove, or while I started to learn how to drive, he'd actually start reading out loud next to me. And I remember... The first time that I was just driving by, you know, just, just dro I, while I drove, while he read, was he was reading a chapter in that book, and I forget what the chapter is called, but it, it talks about a mall. It ta and it, Jamie Smith does a really good job at illustrating how a mall is like a worship temple and how it's reorienting our desires and our loves into something that we don't even know what we are. He basically argues throughout this book that, um, you know, you are what you love. We're not things that think, we are things that love things and then do them because we love them. And sometimes what we love isn't what we think we love. So he talks about how um, people tend to love the mall without even really realizing it. You know, it's, it's this sort of, it's like a temple is the way that he puts it. And then people are, each different store is like an altar. It's a very great, great book. I highly recommend it, um, but that's not exactly what this video is about. But basically, uh, he makes the point that you know the, that uh, mannequins are sort of these these idols um, that they're they they show things that we don't have. You know, consumerist culture kinds of things. They show things that, that if only we had this one thing, it would make us happier and it would make us more satisfied. And as my dad is sitting in the passenger seat reading this book, my mind is blowing. It, it, it completely took my world apart, and I thought that that was incredible. And I realized that I loved my phone. And that wasn't really a good thing. So, you know, I, I thought about that a bit. And this was after... So my mom had a rule where I had to, you know, put my phone away at 9 o'clock. It started off as just a sort of basket in like the living room. It's like, all right, everybody put your devices in there at nine o'clock. And plenty of times she'd forget to check or, you know, she'd forget to actually enforce the thing or, you know, whatever. And it would just go on and on and on. None of us would actually ever do it. I've got a few siblings as well who would just never go through with it either. And then she like really actually started cracking down. And then actually, no, I mean it. And then I just put it down there. She'd go to sleep. I'd come down to the living room, pick it back up and go back upstairs with it. And I'd waste hours and hours and hours until 3.30 in the morning being super tired and hating my life. But I had to watch one more video about Caitlyn Jenner and why that was a thing. I wasted a lot of my time. A lot of my time. So sort of all came to a head when my dad took away my phone from me in this, when I was visiting him for the summer in 2017. And it was because I wasn't really, I was kind of like being a punk just to, to put it shortly. I forget what exactly all I was doing, but I was just 
not really listening to him, sort of acting dumb, and in some senses I was dumb, but the thing that was making me dumb, we sort of troubleshot and figured it with my phone, so he said, alright, we'll have it so that you have it for like an hour or two a day, We're like, sweet, and then like the next day I was on it for like four hours, and um, he was not very happy about that, so he took that from me for like a month, and um, I was a little bit upsetting to my girlfriend at the time, who lived back in North Dakota, and who had no way of getting in contact with me for like a month, and I was in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, so I was obviously uh, an irritant towards her, and uh, I, I, I think it happened again that summer too, I think he had to take it away from me again during that summer, and like, said that if he had bought it, or if I had bought it, that he would have smashed it, but since my mom bought it for me, that he really couldn't do that, so, man, this happened like three or four or five times, and it just kept going on and on and on and on, and, you know, he changed the password on my phone, so only he knew it, but I learned it, like, right away, so that I knew it for months on end, and then my mom found out about that, so I went, okay, um, you know, I, I disagreed with them about a lot of stuff, and I, I thought that their rules were dumb and tyrannical, as all parents are, right, right, and, um, but I realized that I just I didn't I didn't want this to be a problem anymore. I just I just couldn't handle it because my mom had my mom had changed my phone password again and until so like four digits it was like six digits. So that's a lot more digits. Um, and I didn't know how to memorize that. So when I went to I went to Bismarck, which is a couple hours away from where I lived at the time, for um, I made it into Allstate. As a musician, I played French horn, and I was the first person to make it in a long time from our school, so I was really excited about that. And I had my phone with me, but no way to actually use it because I didn't know my pin, and neither did my band director, and only my mom knew my pin. And during those couple of days, I was really happy. I, I you know, at first I sort of had the itch next to my thigh, you know, the phantom text message that you know, some people might feel, but it was nice was really nice and I, and I and it was nice and it reminded me of of all of the times that I didn't have my phone before when it was taken away from me and that was nice too obviously it was a bit uh, a bit more tense when I had a girlfriend and I had to you know still be responsive to that and I, I was kind of failing my obligations as a boyfriend to just be present or respond ever to anything um, but in other senses, it brought about a sense of just nice bliss. Um, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm on the internet still these days, but um, but I decided to, to not have that problem anymore, so I got a flip phone, which was great at first, and then I found out that the, my flip phone had a browser on it, and I was like, oh, well, I can just have my mom turn that off. She talked with uh, Verizon, and they couldn't turn it off, so... Now I've got a browser on my flip phone, which is crappy, but it still works, so it's not exactly as unplugged as I'd like to be. So, there is still that problem. I still, and I spend a little bit too much money on a flip phone that doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. So, I've got to still figure out that kind of a kink. But, other than that, it's significantly alleviated the problem of, of just web surfing while at the cafeteria table, I actually, I would pay more attention to my friends and what they had to say. I had, I had cared about how their day was going. I mean, I've always cared, but, but now I could actually express it instead of having this sort of, you know, weight around my neck that was constantly nagging at me and letting me know that, hey, you gotta, hey, here's a notification. Did you know that Kylie Jenner is another thing that you just heard? Um... And now I don't care anymore. And now I'm, I'm slowly but surely unplugging. I think I'll still probably have a laptop for a long time. Um, I think I'll probably still have a cell phone. It's nice to have some connectivity throughout the stuff. You know, just being able to respond to texts at the grocery store. Oh, and by the way, pick up some butter while you're at the grocery store. You know, instead of like that being a whole problem. But 
I have to say it's nice. It's not for everybody, obviously, and it really is like alcohol. You know, plenty of people can drink in moderation. They can have one or two, maybe even three drinks, and then be done. And for me, it's like blackout drunk, except with technology. So I'm trying to wean myself off of that more and more every day. So uh, that's all for my thoughts as of right now. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other questions that I should make another video about. Um, you can ask me what my favorite color is. You can ask me why the sky is blue. I can't promise you that I'll answer any of those questions, but if you ask me something of substance, I might. So, anyway, thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.